So I'm working on day two here. Oh, my nail. And uh, learning a little bit already. Got to make sure your tool's sharp. And uh, I trimmed the beaver a bit more. But uh, when you shave, it should be coming off. It should be coming off in chunks. So often I gotta clean off my edge, just slide. As you can see how much I'm taking off here, you can see the pile of stuff piling up on the bottom here. Doesn't take very long. different is I trim the legs down and I trim the ears off so I can get up here with the scraper and uh, you can see that's a fairly grizzly beaver um, probably an older one as I'm trying to learn this um, you got to keep a sharp tool everything we do. Here Oscar hauling in the background so I'll do a quick flip over. You wouldn't think there would be that much material to come off a beaver but uh, you can see there's quite a bit. <laughs> It's, uh, it's coming pretty good here. And it really, there's not that much effort involved. I think the biggest thing is to have the cold weather. You gotta have at least minus 20, which would be minus four Fahrenheit. And you gotta have a sharp tool. So it's just amazing. I used to just scrape them with the scraper and see I'd be good. And just realizing how much you can take off. There you have it. There's more work to be done on it, but that gives you the general idea. Keep your tool sharp. You gotta have the cold weather. Stretch it tight. And uh, I'll show a section of what I do after when I bring it back in the house. But uh, pretty impressed. It makes uh, makes it probably saves you two days in the drying time on the board in the basement once I when I go to dry it because all of that extra. Uh, Saddle is not there. It's gone. I picked it up. So pretty cool Learn something new
I'm preferring to have it tail up first. Have a different scraper coming in and hopefully it'll be here today. of your scraper that makes a little bit of a difference and definitely the sharpness of it. There you go. I'm sure I can do it a lot better and as I get the hang of it I probably will. But, uh, I like to try and a different spray for us for sure. But definitely I would say taking the ears off, docking the ears down is a lot better and cutting the front legs closer. We didn't even cut them a bit closer yet. look closely you can see the skin that comes off I'm gonna zoom in here if you look there's a actual membrane there that's the skin and I know uh, Robert Connor does a lot of this. He's given me some tips. It's helping out. And uh, he has, if you ever see his fur, you always know why it's top notch stuff there. He knows exactly how to do this for the science. It's pretty cool. And uh, hopefully, some other guys can learn from this. I'm sure Robert would make me look like an amateur because I am. But uh, it's the only way I can show you is uh, to do it and figure it out, make it up as I go here and figure it out. But you see, at the bottom I'm getting quite a pile of shavings down there and I got a bucket going right here. So it's pretty cool. This is not, this is not frost drying. Frost drying, you would put it to the shape and you'd leave it outside and you, have, you gotta have minus 20. And colder and a bit of wind really helps. But this is frost scraping. Just brought them inside. I'll thaw them out. And there's one that I did the other day. And uh, it's ready to come off the board. And like I said, I haven't got it completely figured out yet. But I'm getting there. And uh, I would say it probably saves me a day in the drying time. It definitely, definitely thins the uh, thins it down quite a bit, so it's pretty cool. I'll put it back on when I uh, once I get these guys off the board and thaw it out and everything. You can see uh, Oscar decided to have a little chew on the side of that one there, the bugger. This is one of the ones that I had uh, frost scraped that I'm going to put on the board now. So I thawed it out. This is how I size my beaver. I put it between the rings. Red line. Put my nails on. Tools I'm going to use. So I definitely find it a much Pelt. So you don't really lose any time boarding, boarding it because I've already cleaned the edges on it. So putting it up doesn't take that long.
definitely, definitely makes for a much smoother pelt. What I mean by smoother is there's no knife ridges or anything in it. It's, it's pretty smooth right out. So boarding time is very quick actually compared to conventional time it would take me to board something because basically it's the job is done it's just a matter of tacking it out for the size beaver that you're working with today. You can see. time is it's just a matter of getting the right size going around and boarding it boarding it out and so far what I've learned is that it saves at least a day in the drying time. So a day in drying time is is kind of huge. Might even, sorry, might even be two days in drying time. So that speeds up my process because usually I like to leave them on the board for three to four days, depending on the size of the be beaver. Of course, the bigger the be beaver, the longer I'll leave it on the board. And there's no real cleanup to speak of. I would on a normal beaver. I'd be I'd spend five or six minutes right at the end brushing it. I don't have to do that in this case. It's already done. I like my beavers uh, tight on the board. The mark from 90% of the beaver right now is for the hatter market. And Leaving it slack, like we used to do, doesn't give you any advantage. You stretch it as a, a large or an extra large, and you lose the size because you understretch it a bit. You're going to lose money because it's all about the size of the pelt right now. It's not about the... It's not about the uh, further by the fur predominantly on the fact that every size beaver has X amount of under fur in it it's only the felt that they're after it's not the it's not the guard hairs so a bigger beaver gives you more felt and that's the end of the story one time we make it so there was slack in the middle, but we don't do that anymore. At least I don't. It's always important to follow the market. And it's changing all the time. Very little shearable beaver that are done nowadays. It's not like it was. 15 years ago, when there was a viable trade in Montreal. Now, there's basically nothing left in Montreal. There was probably 50 manufacturers of, of shearable garments in Montreal at one time. And I would venture to say there's probably not even five left nowadays. Today's reality is that the market is once again dominated by Adder Beaver and like I said, 
they're buying them by size, not by fur quality so much. Has to have under fur, but minor damage doesn't count anymore. Lots of things don't count the way they, they used to count. So next what we do with this is hang it to dry. And normally like I said I would leave it on the board for three to four days. I would wipe it after the second day for sure because there would be some grease that would come up. And with the newer the system that I just used, you don't have the same, uh, same issue. Tools away, and that's it. In two days' time, this thing would be uh, will be dry, and we'll take it off the board. And we're done. So this beaver was frost scraped a couple days ago, and uh, it's ready to come off the board. So that's this is two nights and it's dry and uh, I'm still learning how to do it and, uh, but that saves that saves me at least one day if not two days so, pretty good I thought Frost scraping is not frost drying. If I was to frost dry this, it would be a, I would put it out in the cold. You need like minus 20 for 10 days to make it freeze. Freeze dry. Frost scraping is just getting the grease to freeze. heavy beaver it's a lot it's a lot thinner beaver It doesn't care. There you go. Ready to go. 